anyway, so how about number 14? So the, the phraseology, which one is the operation that's happening first? You know, number 14, you take a number X and what do you do to it first? What did you guys decide? Hmm. Oh, someone in the chat, let's see, said. Oh, am I muted? What the heck? Seriously? Can you hear me? Hello? I, I, I can, can hear, hear you. you. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I, or maybe someone else, maybe they were talking to someone else too. Okay, right. But you, oh, let's see, someone said. Oh, okay, good, good, good. I wouldn't be surprised if I did something like that. Mute myself, talk for 20 minutes, and no one heard anything I said. That sounds about right. But in this one, do you think you're adding two first to X and then multiplying by five? Or are you multiplying by five and then adding two? You mm -hmm. add two, don't you? Let's see, yeah. uh, multiply by five first, right? Because yeah, of PEMDAS, that's and then you add two after. You're right. Good point. You're, you're kind of thinking of it as PEMDAS. What's going on first? Are there any parentheses? No. If there was, the operation in the parentheses would be your first thing. But there's none of that. Exponent would be next. Okay, that's not happening. And then the multiply divide. Yeah, you're right. If, I think if they were wanting you to do the, the, the adding first, they would have written it five and then parentheses. So that way, you know, X plus two is up happening first parentheses. And then, so you're right. I think you multiply by five, uh, then add two. Yeah, so some, this one, I think it was kind of tricky. It's not super clear which one's first because it's not like in number 13 where there were parentheses. So it made it obvious which one happens first. So my function that's happening first, we already said it's multiplying by five. So f of x should be five x. And then g of x, the function that happens afterwards is the adding two to x. Yeah, don't worry. And if you mix those up, you said f was the plus two and the g was the multiply by five. That's that's understandable because this one is not obvious. It's There's no parentheses making it obvious. I know I, I wasn't very nice. I just took the easy one, number 13 for myself and gave you guys the more difficult one. <laughs> that's not very nice. How about so do you always want to write, write it out as well as just give the answer? I think in these ones they wanted, yeah, this one in, in these uh, problems, they wanted a verbal description. But I think for the most part, like in the homework, they don't really ask for the verbal description. I don't think. And if they did, they'd probably, it'd probably be more like a multiple choice where they'd say, OK, here's a few options for the verbal description. Which one do you think is the right one? And you click it. But I think typically there's not you don't have to write a verbal description just in the silly worksheet that we're doing, <laughs> I guess. How about in uh, number 15 or are there any questions about number 14? What do you how do you feel about that? Does it kind of make sense now that we've gone over it? It's if they wanted the adding first, they would have put it in parentheses, because if you follow the order of operations, PEMDAS. Multiply comes before add. So that's what I would think to do here. Yeah, and if they wanted to add first, they would have put it in parentheses. But that one's not obvious. It's kind of tricky. Okay, and number, and number 15 looks like there's two operations. There's you're raising it to a third power and you're adding one. Which one do you think is happening first to this X, I guess? And if I take a number X and then do I add one and then raise it to the third power or should I raise it to the third power and then add one? You'll raise, raise the, the third power and then add, uh, add one to the number. Nice. Okay, I think you all got that one. Nice. Take the number X. You could phrase it as raise it to the third power, like I said, uh, or you could say cube it. Either way, it's up to you. Cube it is shorter, so it's less writing, which is nice. Cube it. So either of those is fine. Yeah, no worries. And then add one. So how about then F of X? What would he look like? F of X is equal to what? Hmm. So f of x is supposed to be the first operation. And I guess we already, you know, we said it verbally. You should be first raising it to the third power or cubing it. So yeah, f of x would be your x to the third. And then g of x would be your last operation. You're, it seemed weird, though. I always felt like when I was a student, you're adding one. But what am I adding one to? It seems like it's not just x. But yeah, I guess you're imagining combining those two functions together. And like I said, it's, I know I'm saying this maybe too much. And it's <laughs> it's getting old. but if, when we were, if we were to combine these two, if I didn't know what their combination looked like up here, if I wasn't given this, I would be taking what the function f of x, I grab that x cubed and I replace the x and g with it. So imagine g of x, I, that x disappears. So I'm going to erase it and it goes, disappears. And I'm replacing where it was with the whole function f of x. And that was just x cubed. And that's what our original guy looked like, h of x. So that's really why it seems like, why would f and g both have an x? Because when I combine them, how am I going to just have an x? So it seems like there'd be multiple. But yeah, when you combine them, it's strange, but you're, you're replacing one x with the whole of the other function. 
that takes some getting used to, but that's just, I, like I said, it's, we're not having to do that yet or worry about that right now, but um, that's coming in the future. So I, I just wanted to keep saying it. Maybe it'll be easier by the time we get there. Anyway, that's a lot. So then, okay. I think we're, we're doing pretty good. You know, we've mastered, okay, verbally, if they describe a function to me, can I put it in, um, you know, math terms and symbols and stuff? And then multiple operations is kind of complicated, but I think we kind of got the idea now. Now in this, these next couple of problems, they say a function H with two operations is described. So let's write an equation for H like we kind of did above, then write functions F and G that represent the two operations. So it's kind of in, in the previous problems we were doing, they gave us H we had to give the verbal description and the two little functions f and g, but now they're giving us the verbal description and we have to tell them what h is. So it's, it's just similar to what the previous ones were, but giving us a different piece of information. So in number 17, it says the function h, it multiplies a number x by seven. So I could write seven times x or x times seven, but we mentioned, you know, with addition or multiplication, it doesn't really matter what order they're in. So I just because you typically see the coefficient on the left and the, ver and the variable on the right, so multiplies a number x by seven and then subtracts three. Subtraction, it does matter what order they're in. So I can't write three minus seven x. Because they mentioned the subtracting later, that must mean it goes on the right side. It's occurring after the seven x was already there. So do you think I wrote it correctly or should it have been seven parentheses x minus three? Because one of the ones above had parentheses, one didn't, and it mattered which one. What do you think? Do you think it's good the way it was originally or should I have put parentheses in there? I think it's good the way it is right now, seven x minus three. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice. You're right. If I think if they had mentioned the subtracting first in the, you know, in their verbal description, they said subtract three and then multiply by seven, then you would have needed the parentheses, but they mentioned multiplying by seven first and then subtracting three, which is exactly what it looks like originally, I think. Yeah. So I think we're good the way we had it. Yeah. Yeah. But if they had said those two operations in the opposite order, then I would need to put the parentheses just to indicate that I want to subtract first and then multiply. But that, okay, so we did the H and then what did also, they also wanted the F and G. So kind of, we're having to do the same things we did before. F is the first operation that they mentioned, which they said, multiply a number X by seven. All right, and then G should be the last operation that they mentioned, subtracting three from the number X. So those are kind of, yeah, it's very similar to those previous problems, but we're not having to give the verbal description. We're just having to say what H is and then F and G. Okay, yeah. How's that one sound? So is it okay? Or do you have any questions about that one? Okay, it's a little bit tricky. How about, well, maybe we don't have to, maybe because these are shorter problems, maybe we won't break into groups. How about I'll just pause for a second. Let's all try number 18 and see if we all come back together and get the same answer. We'll give it a few minutes, okay. Okay, I apologize if that's not enough time, but do you feel like you're all done with that one? It sounds almost yeah. the same as number 17. Yeah, we're done, we're done. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. I hope you let me know if I ever interrupt you and you're still working, just say, don't bother me, I'm working. And I'll say, oh, okay, okay. So how about, it sounds almost the same phrasing as number 17, but what's different about when you write H, what does it look like? So the difference is it says subtracts three from a number X then multiplies by seven. So now in this case, you know, we can put, X minus three parentheses multiplied by seven. Nice, you're right, exactly. Like, it's almost like you can write, you can kind of write what they're saying as you read it, you know what I mean? So if I, you know, if, if you're kind of new to this and you're not, you don't feel super comfortable as you read it, okay, H, it subtracts three from a number X. Okay, that sounds like I'm taking three away from X and then it multiplies by seven. But I want this whole, the whole thing that I see right here on my screen to be multiplied by seven. So I wouldn't just write the seven, times the X, because it should be seven times that whole 
thing, x minus three in parentheses. So you're right, you're, you're right. If you didn't put those parentheses, someone would view your h of x as, oh, I'm multiplying by seven and then subtracting three. But when I put the parentheses there, I'm forcing them to subtract and then multiply. Kind of, I guess parentheses are there so that someone might do the order of operations in a different order. If you don't put the parentheses, they're gonna multiply first and then add, or sorry, subtract. But you put the parentheses there, then they have to do what's in parentheses, even if it's that very last operation there, then they're gonna multiply. Okay, okay. So that means pretty much that this function h of x in 18 is the same as in 17, but it's little pieces, the functions f and g are opposite, right? f is x minus three, because that's the inner function or the one that's happening first. And then g of x is the outer function or the one that's happening last. So just seven times x. Does that seem like what everybody kind of figured for that one? Okay, yeah. So far, so good. Am I recording? Okay, good. I'm just making sure. Okay, okay. Now, number 19, I think maybe we'll do the same thing. 19 and 20 are almost the same, but a little bit different. 19 says the function h, it adds 5 to a number x. Okay, so sometimes it helps to just write a little at a time. I don't have to read the whole thing. I just read part. I just get stop right there. Function h, it adds 5 to a number x and then squares the result. So that means I don't want to just square x. I want to square this entire thing. I better put it in parentheses. It doesn't want just, if it, if it just wanted x squared, then it would have said it squares a number x and then adds five afterwards, but they want to add five first. So in order, like kind of like I said before, in order to force someone to do the order of operations in out of order, sort of, I want them to add first. I have to use parentheses to make sure that someone that's doing this would add and then do the exponent, go against the order of operations. That's kind of what parentheses are for when you're putting them in there. Um, and then in that case, f is the first operation that's happening, and they mention adding five first, so that must be f. And then g is the second operation. It's just raising a number x, whatever you whatever you get to the second power, or squaring it. I think that sounds good. How about number twenty? You want to try number twenty? I have a question, Professor. Oh, yeah. So, so over here at number nineteen, <clears throat> f of x equals x plus five. But g of x, how come it's just x squared? Why can't it just be, you know, parentheses x plus five squared? Oh, I think because you're you're wanting to break your h down into two pieces, and each of them only has one operation in each. So one okay. of them would take care of the plus five, the other one would take care of the square. But you don't want when you're kind of the basic pieces of your your comp complicated function f and g or your little basic pieces. I just want one operation to be happening in each one. I guess you're trying to break it into very simple functions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then un unfortunately, there's sometimes where H, we, we haven't seen that yet, but H could have lots of operations like X plus five squared. And then I divide by seven or something. Oh my gosh. Then God forbid you see that you have three operations. There's adding and then squaring and dividing. Then you would need three basic functions, F and G and something else to, to take care of one operation each. Yeah. I think that's a good question though. That's, that's kind of your goal is I want F and G to just have one simple operation in them just to break it down into little pieces. It's so, yeah, it's so strange. I think it's kind of, I think doing these types of problems kind of helps you understand the this section 2.6 and 2.7 in Math 111. It'll, yeah, Math 111, that it'll kind of give you how to do it, but you won't have the motivation or the understanding necessarily of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, like I said, this Math 111, there's too much information in one little class. So there's not a lot of time to get the background and understand what's really going on in the background. and yeah, uh, so it seems like number 20 is almost saying the same thing, but what do you think the H of X in number 20, how is it different from the one in number 19? It squares X alone. Yeah, you're right. It squares just X. Oh, oh what was that? And then it adds five afterwards. Yeah, you're right. So that one, I wouldn't need parentheses because I don't want to square the entirety of X plus five. I just want to square X. And then after I'm done with that, then I'll add five. So I guess because, you know, like kind of like we were mentioning before, if because I'm, I'm wanting someone to do the operations in the order of operations, it's talking about squaring or raising as an exponent first before adding. So there's no need to put parentheses in there because someone would just follow order of operations to, to simplify this. If I gave them a specific X value, and so I don't really need the parentheses to guide them to do it in a different order. They're already going to be doing it in the right order that I want. So it's kind of weird. Anyway, and then in this one, though, f of x and g of x are the same, but they're switched. It's kind of like with number 17 and 18. Huh? f of x now, I'm wanting to square first. 
And then G, I want to add five later. And then that's, yeah, it's, it's strange, but the way to combine them, if I didn't know what H was and someone said, these are the basic functions, F and G, now combine them to make them one, you're taking the entirety of F and replacing the X in G with it. Replace, oh, replace. Not that they asked us to do that, but that's coming in Math 111 material. So it's kind of good to have seen it. Replace the X in G of X with uh, just whatever you know F has. So I'd go G of, no, actually I should use that. I'm gonna use that same notation we talked about in the very beginning, just cause you'll see that. Yeah, in this section, if you haven't already seen it yet, uh, G of F, that's the composition of X. That means I'm taking uh, F and putting it where G was. So I'll take G of X was X plus five, but where that X was, I'm gonna put X squared. You're kind of throwing the X away that G had and replacing it with the whole function F of X. And that's how I would, if I was, if I didn't know what H was and I was just given F and G and they said, go ahead and combine them. Then that's kind of the idea of it. You're taking one X away and replacing it with the whole function F. It's so strange. We used to have, you know, the, the, MJC, we used to have a whole math class just dedicated to algebra. There was no pre-calculus stuff and no college algebra like we have. And it took, I would spend a lot of time on that stuff, composition of two functions. But unfortunately, the state said we can't teach that class anymore. And we have to shove all this information into you. Poor, feel bad about all this. It's too much. It's too much in one class. Anyway. All right. All right. Quit, quit complaining, right? That's how I know I'm getting old. I just complain all day. You know what? Back in my day, we used to be able to teach algebra. And we had plenty of time to do it. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> so this, I don't know if we have time to finish all this worksheet. You know, we'll just see what we get through. And then it's not, yeah, it's okay. So let's see, at number 21, what do they want us to do here? Refer back to number 17 and through 20. Okay. I think they're wanting us to kind of come to some realizations here about those problems we just did. So they say, compare your answers in 17 and 18. So let me see, just to really go, quickly go back and look at them. 17 and 18, we said, oh, that 17 and 18 had the same operations. There was multiplying by seven, subtracting three, but they wanted us to do them in the opposite order. That's right. Okay. So they said, compare your answers. Are the functions H that you found in each exercise the same? One of them was seven X minus three, and one of them was seven times X minus three parentheses. How are the functions F and G in 17 related to the functions F and G in number 18? These, I would say these are not the same because one has parentheses, one doesn't. That means I'm, I would be doing the operations in the, a different order. I would be multiplying by seven and then subtracting three in one case and then subtracting three and then multiplying by seven in the other. And if I were to put a specific X value in each of those, I would get a different answer when I do one versus the other. Not the same H of X for sure, they're different. And I think as we go through these coming problems, we'll kind of see why. And then they said, how did the functions F and G relate to the functions F and G and from 17 to 18? And I think as we were going through it, we kind of said F and G in number 17, are the opposite, I don't know, is that the right word? Are they switched? Uh, F and G in number 18. Cause you know, if you go back, one of them has seven X for F of X and then X minus three for G of X. But then for the next problem, they're just switched. It's the exact same functions, but now I'm calling the old F, I'm calling it G and the old G I'm calling it F, but they're the same functions. Just they're happening in a different order, I guess. And the number 22 says, now compare your answers in 19 and 20. And, and they're going to ask the same question. So those ones, I think they were very similar. You know, that there was the same two operations in 19 and 20. I'm adding five first in 19 and then raising it to the second power. But in number 20, we raised it to the second power and then added five. So you notice that the functions F and G are just opposites as well. In number 19, F is X plus five and G is X squared. But now in number 20, they're the same guys, but in the opposite order. F is now the old G and G is now the old F. So they're kind of the opposites. I don't know if that's, is that the right word? Opposites? I guess so. Hopefully that explains it. Yeah, so kind of the same. They're not the same functions. It's kind of the, it's pretty much the exact same answer as number 21. Not the same H of X in 19 and 20. Because one of them had parentheses, one didn't. That totally changes the order of the things I should do, the squaring and the adding five. And then the same thing, the F and the G in numbers 19 and 20 are opposites, you switch them, you know, the old F is the new G and the old G is the new F. Okay, so pretty much, yeah, same same answer. You can pretty much copy number 21 and 22. They're the exact same answer, but you're talking about the different problem numbers. Now, number 23 says, I think they're, they're trying to get us to come to a realization here. Yeah, they're guiding us to it. Number 23 says the function number 18 is H of X equals in parentheses X minus three. 
Use the distributive property to simplify the right side of the equation and then give a verbal description of what the function h does. I think they're wanting us to like super, super realize how the h in number 18 is different from the h in number 17. But they're saying, you know, you, you had parentheses on your function h in number 23, or sorry, in number 18. What if you were to distribute that seven? You know, we could, if we wanted to simplify it, that'd be seven times x minus seven times three, 21. But now compare that with the h from number 17. No, that was number 18's answer. And number 17, it looked like h of x is seven x minus three, no parentheses. I think then you're, it's more, now you're comparing apples to apples. They're totally different functions because one of them's taking x, multiplying it by seven. The other one does the same thing. But in the first one, in number 18's answer, you're subtracting 21, but in number 17, you're subtracting three. So definitely, if you imagine x being any number, I like spe specify what x is. x is one, for example. I put a one in there, seven times one is seven, minus 21 is negative 14. But if I put x, you know, I'm just making up x equals one. You could put any number in. Um, if you put it in, you're gonna get h of x is, like we said, um, negative 14 for the top one. But if I put h of x, um, h of one, I put a one in the bottom one, seven times one minus three is four. So they're definitely different functions because if I just, if I give any random x value and I try to substitute them in the h of x from number 18 versus the h of x from number 17, I'm going to get a different number. So definitely those functions must be different. They're, if I give them the same number, they're spitting out different answers. There's no way those are the same thing. So that, I guess that just shows that parentheses really matter because the only difference between number 17 and 18 is the parentheses. So now, okay, 24 says, based on your work in number 17 through 23, does the order in which two operations are performed make a difference? Yes. I would say you, you'll, like kind of like what we said, if you specify an X value, like we said, we said X equals one, but it could have been anything you can think of, zero, negative 10, a million, um, you will get different outputs. You know, I, I throw in a certain number, these H's of X will spit out or give me an output that's different depending on which, which of them I have with the parentheses and the order of operations being different. So now I think, we, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time, um, but just we want to get a little bit, that was mostly talking about combining two functions and the order that you combine them matters and all that. But now the rest of this, we might not finish it, but it's trying to talk about now inverse functions. We kind of introduced it in the very beginning today, but we didn't really do any examples like it, but this is starting to get in there, which I think even if we don't finish this, just seeing it a little bit is going to help a lot before we do that section in Math 111, talking about inverses. So many basic functions can be undone. For example, the function f of x equals x plus five, which adds five to a number, can be undone by the function, we'll call it capital F, x minus five. Just think about what operation is happening to x in the original guy and do the opposite of that in the what you want to be the, your inverse. If you add five to a number x, then subtract, you come back to the original number. So that's, that's kind of your goal. You want f of x and it's inverse, the inverse to be opposites. And I think I've heard someone, I think an, a previous math instructor that I had said, think of whatever the original function is, you're, you're doing something like, say you're putting on your shoes in the morning. Okay, I put my shoes on. The other, the other function should do the opposite. So what's the opposite of putting your shoes on? It's taking them off, something like that. So I just want to be able to, whatever operation was done originally, I want to be able to undo that with my inverse guy. So that's kind of, yeah, kind of the idea. So now it says in number 25 through 28, let's write a function f that undoes the given function f. Okay, so in number 25, the function little f, it takes a number and subtracts two. So what do you think? What's, what would be the opposite of that? I guess using their, their symbols, we're going to write capital F. What would be the opposite of that? X, what's happening to x in the inverse? Addition. Yeah, there you go, nice. Addition, just of the exact same number, you know? So I, I would just want to, if I were to be able to specify an X value, what if, whatever I do here, I wanna undo it here. So like if someone takes two away from my number, I'm gonna add two back just so that it's like nothing happened. That's pretty much, yeah, what you wanna do. And then, so in number 26, that function F of X, it takes a number X and multiplies it by seven. So what would the opposite of that look like? How would you write the inverse? Well, I guess 
the opposite would be dividing, right? So, but then the question is, is it seven divided by X or X divided by seven? What do you think? Let's see, someone said, yeah, division, you're right. But I think you probably don't want this guy, right? Cause that's not, it's not X divided by seven, it's seven divided by X. So I want this one that, yeah, but like we said, the, the order in which you divide or subtract matters, the order in which you add or multiply, that doesn't matter. How about now in number 27? That's almost like the opposite of number 26. They gave us division. So the opposite of dividing a number by nine would be multiplying it by nine. Yeah. So it's, it doesn't matter what X is. If you, if you first do this, I take a number and I divide it by nine. It doesn't matter what that number is. And then I multiply by nine. I just get that original number back. It's like, I didn't do anything. I just undid the work that F did with my inverse capital F. Ooh, how about, this is a tricky one. So F of X now in number 28 is X cubed. What would be the opposite of that? How would you write the opposite of cubing something? The cube root of X. Nice, there you go. That one's not so easy. You're right. Just think, what's the opposite? What's going to undo a cube, a cube root? So it's like, no matter what X you specify, I want X to be a certain number. You cube it, it's going to maybe change it. And then you cube root it, it'll get it back to the original guy. Like I said, it's like you put your shoes on and then you take them off. You just wasted a bunch of time because nothing happened, no change. Yeah. And that'll be important in coming sections, I think. Let's see. We have, yeah, I don't know if we'll finish all this, but that's okay. I think it's just getting the motivation behind that section in Math 111. Why, how and why am I finding these inverses? It'll help a lot. Um, so but for these ones, it says, look again at, I guess we saw this guy earlier. We've seen so many functions, I forgot. That doesn't look recognizable to me, but okay. H of X is three parentheses times X minus four. That function first subtracts four from a number X, and then it multiplies the result by three. The function H is a combination of the functions. They say F first is the X minus four, because that's the first thing I want to do. That's my first operation. And then G of X is three times X, because that's the... The last operation I want to do, since it's not in the parentheses. Ooh, okay, so now this is a good one. Okay, so now we want to write, now that I've kind of broken H of X down to its basic pieces, H has two operations. So it's not obvious what its inverse is, you know, like, so H of X, it multiplies by three and it subtracts four. I want to be able to write its inverse. And I know the opposite of multiplying by three is dividing by three. And I know that the opposite of subtracting four is divide, or sorry, is adding four. But what order do I do that in when I write the inverse? I think that's what this is kind of building up to. So that's now they're just, we're gonna kind of break it down into pieces. They're saying now just because we've broken H down into its little parts, H has two operations, but let's break it down into its pieces. F is the first operation and G is the second. If I just look at F, don't worry about H yet. It has multiple operations. We don't really know what to do with it yet. Just F, it subtracts four. So its inverse would be X plus four. That, that's kind of similar to the previous problems, okay. We'll worry about H later, but for now, I'm just looking at the pieces of it, F and G. How about for G? G of X, little g, is the function that takes a number X and multiplies by three. The opposite of that would be divide by three. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah, those are similar to the problems we saw above in the previous page. Okay, I think I could do that. But now number 31, it's kind of getting us to a, a good place, and we'll understand the Math 111 inverse section a lot easier after this. Undoing H, it should involve adding four and dividing by three, kind of like we were mentioning, because it has those oper opposite operations. H has multiplying by three and subtracting four. The opposite of that would be adding four and dividing by three. But the question is, which order do I do the inverse in? Um, let's see, but in which order? Fine. Okay, this is, <laughs> I think this is kind of getting into the weeds. Uh, uh, you know, I think I'm gonna just say, I must think they're in number 31 and 32, they're trying to get us to understand something, but I almost think uh, they're complicating it. So I think instead of those, I'm just gonna skip just because I think it might even muddy the waters. Is that the right way to say it? I'm gonna say just instead when a function, this is I think the point they were trying to get us to, I'm just gonna say it because I think the way they try to get us there is confusing. When a function um, has multiple operations, operations like the one h above it was multiplying by three and at, um, subtracting four operations it's inverse it will have the opposite operations but also in the opposite order i'll see order so not only do i undo the operations that the original function had when i find the inverse by yeah, figuring out what the opposite operations are. I need to do them in the opposite order. So 
in that example, this one above h of x, I'll, I'll scroll down so we can see that, but h of x, it's inverse. And if we keep using the notation they're using, I'll do capital. It would be, okay, I know I'm dividing by three and I'm adding four, but I want to do it in the opposite order. So in that function, little h, they subtracted four first. That means that's the last thing I want to do. The opposite of subtracting four is adding four. They multiplied by three last. The opposite of multiplying by three is dividing by three, but I need to do it in the opposite order. So I'm not only am I reversing those, I'm changing multiplying by three to dividing by three. I'm changing subtracting four to adding four, but instead of doing the adding or subtracting first and then doing the multiplying or dividing, I need to switch the order as well. So instead of that, I'll divide by three and then add four. So that's that's the tricky thing about inverses. If there's multiple operations going on, I have to um, in reverse what those operations are and also reverse their order as well. So it's, it's complicated, but I think when we do these few examples down here, it'll make more sense. Um, so maybe we can, I don't know if we'll get to number 35, but maybe we can do, um, let's see, number 33 together, and then we'll pause and have everybody try number 34. So it's, I think the first, if you're really good at this and you've seen it before, then you probably can just spit out the answer and you're, you don't need to show any work. But if it's new, it's probably good to break this down. So this H of X, it's giving, it wants me to find the inverse, but it does help to break it down first. The what's happening first to X, it's adding five to it. So that's my F of X, kind of like the previous problems we did. G of X is the last thing that's happening. That's multiplying by three. So now I'm going to say, what's the opposite of that opposite? I'm going to find their inverses, just those basic pieces opposite. Okay. Or inverse. Yeah. Um, let's see, capital F, if I want to know the opposite of adding five, okay, that would be subtracting five. Okay. And then G, same kind of thing. I'm multiplying by three, but it's inverse or it's opposite would be dividing by three. So now when I find the inverse of the big function that has multiple operations of H, I want these guys to be in there, but I need to reverse their order. Um, so reverse order. So instead of, um, in the original h, the lowercase h, I'm adding five first. I need to subtract the opposite of adding, subtract five last. And they, in the original h, I, they multiplied by three first. And, and um, that was, or sorry, they multiplied by three last, but I need to do the opposite of that, dividing by three, but I do it first. So you reverse, yeah, reverse the order. So I wouldn't do x minus five, and then divided by three, because they those are the opposite operations, you know, adding five, subtracting five, those are opposite. And then multiplying by three, dividing by three, those are opposite, but I need to do them in the opposite order. I don't want to subtract first. I want to subtract last. And I don't want to multiply last and divide last. I want to do it first. So it's confusing. Nah, but just to practice, maybe how about we'll pause and have everybody try number 34 and see if we all get the same thing. Just kind of kind of try to do it the way we did number 33, especially if this is a new thing. Okay, we'll give it a few minutes, okay. Oh yeah. So Abraham, did you, you're all done? Yes. Yeah. No. What did you do? So I got F of X, which equals eight X over eight. And I got G of X, which equals X minus three. So when you inverse that function of H of X, I got capital H of X, which equals eight parentheses X plus three. Nice. Very good. That's awesome. This is like, this is complicated. So I think if you're understanding everything and it's all good, then you're doing really good. Nice. All right. This stuff is getting weird, but you did it perfect. Yeah. This one, when you break little h down, okay, the first thing that's happening to h is you're dividing by three. And then after that, you're subtracting, or sorry, ah, dividing by eight, and then you're subtracting three. But if so, if I were to reverse those, what's the inverse of those? Instead of dividing by eight, I would multiply by eight. So I'd write eight times x. And then for little g, the opposite of that would be instead of subtracting three, I'll add three. And then instead of doing, when I find the inverse of the big guy, h, I don't want to do those in the same order. h divided by eight first, that means I want to multiply by eight last. The opposite of dividing by eight is multiplying. And they subtracted first, I want to do the opposite of that, adding, or sorry, dang it, I said the opposite way. They divided by eight first, I need to do the opposite of that, multiply last. 
and then they subtracted three, that was their last thing. I want to do the opposite of that and add three first. So you're right. That's exactly what it is. You just now I need to put the x plus three in parentheses. It's the opposite operations in the opposite order, basically. Yeah. Huh. It's tricky, but I think it'll make it make more sense when you get into the, you know, the actual Math 111 material. And then 35, I'm just going to talk about it quickly. Um, this one's super complicated. I think this kind, this has three operations going on. The very first thing that's happening to F is it's being multiplied by two. And then once I kind of zoom out of there, I think the next thing that's happening is I'm adding one. So it'd be X plus one. But the very last thing, because three is very far away from X, it's not... Yeah, I think that's the last operation that's happening. It's almost like three things going on. You're dividing, first you're multiplying by two, and then you're adding one, and then you're dividing by three. If I want to find the opposite of all those, break, break them down into their basic pieces and find the inverse or the opposite. Um, opposite of multiplying by two would be dividing by two. Then the opposite of adding one would be subtracting one. And then the opposite of dividing by three would be multiplying by three. And now when I find the inverse of the original big guy, j of x, I guess they called them, so I'll call them big j of x. I want to do all the all these inverse operations, but I do it in the opposite order. There, in the original little j, the first thing that happened was multiplying by two. I want to do the opposite of that last. So this should be the last thing I see. The, this would be like the middle step, I guess, subtracting one, and this should be the first thing. So I'm going to focus on this guy. That's the first thing I should see, 3x. And then I subtract one from that, and then I divide by two. That should, that's... That's what the answer should look like. But, you know, I think this worksheet is good for um, if you have basic functions, of maybe one or two operations, finding the inverse is not so bad. But honestly, ones like this, like in this last example, number 35, if I saw this oh, number, uh, this 2x plus one over three, I just follow these. There's a step by step process to finding an inverse, and then you would get this. It's a lot easier for sure when, when it's a complicated function. So don't, don't feel like you have to do it this way that's described here. This is, I guess, just so you have an intuitive view of this stuff and then do, just following these robotic steps that you'll see in math 111 for this section it'll kind of understanding why they do that makes makes it easier i think for some reason